You've got a very good presentation coming up. Michael Sachs is from the National Treasury. You're a DDG, are you not, from Budget? Is it Budget? Okay, I want to make sure I got the right one in there. And he, I've, he spoke before on different things, but I think you're going to find this a very important discussion. So we'll begin. And Michael, it's up to you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, what do I have to do? There we go. Uh, what, what I'm going to try and do is to talk about two things. The medium-term economic and fiscal context and the longer-term economic and fiscal context. Uh, economists, when it comes to estimating the future, I, I usually say are not much better than uh, weather reporters. Uh, although weather, they have a bit of a longer time frame, so when an, an, a weather, weatherman can tell you what the weather's going to be tomorrow with quite a lot of certainty. Next week it gets a bit rough and after a month uh, they really couldn't tell you what's going to happen. Uh, economists kind of know what's happening this year and next year it's a little bit rough. The year after that and three years into the future it's really just an educated guess. Um, so, uh, and, and this was underscored this week by the IMF, who revised down their global uh, economic growth projection. I've got a terrible echo here that is quite off the right? they, they revised down their global economic growth projection for next, for 2015, for the current year, from 4% down to 3.3%. So even an, an august body as the IMF is unsure what the trajectory of the global economy is going to be this year. And the same applies to National Treasury. So when I talk about the medium term outlook, it's with uh, those caveats in mind. When I talk about the long term outlook, we're really trying to um, paint pictures of scenarios that could possibly happen rather than uh, predict with any certainty what actually will happen. So, uh, the, the first part is the current fiscal context, context which as you will know is quite uh, uh, difficult. Uh, the global economy is slowing uh, and within that slow growth, South Africa is slowing even more than the average. So, you can see the, the black line there showing the uh, uh, global average growth rate. And right up until the global crisis of 2009, South Africa was more or less tracking the global average. But since 2009, South Africa, which is the red line, has begun to diverge from the global average, which shows that there are two uh, factors behind slowing growth. One of them is global, but there are also domestic factors that are weighing down on South Africa's growth. One of the global factors that we're particularly worried about is given by this green dotted line, which is the growth of all emerging markets, so your China, India, Brazil, Russia, and others. And you can see that since the global crisis, there's been a sharp deceleration of growth in those economies, which continues to this day, and which underlines the events that we've seen in China over the last week or so. So the reason we're so worried about this slowdown in the emerging markets is that they have been driving the demand for um, uh, South Africa's key exports, which are commodity exports. This graph shows the prices in U.S. dollar terms of four of our most important exports, platinum, gold, iron ore, and coal. And you can see that even though the global crisis hit us in 2009 and is reflected in this sudden downward drop in those export pr prices of our export commodities, since 2009, although South Africa has been uh, hurt by weak global demand, but the prices of the things we sell overseas continued to uh, rise at quite a phenomenal pace. So between about 2009 and 2012, from an economic but also from a fiscal point of view, global demand shortfalls were offset by improving terms of trade for South Africa. So.